historic endeavor to renew our story, our faith, our cathedral. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Son of okay, so this is an Adam 10. And it's a streamer, as I was just streaming Catholic radio from Texas, because Catholic talk radio is on here. The best of the British, music, conservative talk, ideas, science, sci-fi, television. Ooh, television. Mm, the West Wing Weekly. Is that still a thing? Dead Meat Podcasts, Juice TV, Detroit TV. This thing is $2,000, and I'm going to have a hard time telling anyone that they need it. Because it doesn't do anything that you can't do in other ways cheaper. But it's an all-in-one. And Revy here is pointing her cutlass right at it because I'm just... I've, I've had it to here with trying to get this thing to function the way it's supposed to. I couldn't get the app to install. It wouldn't install my uh, original phone. I had to get another phone. This is my backup phone installed on it or else it just wouldn't work. Blue OS is what it uses. Um, it's very hot. I've got my, my infrared thermometer. The top is only is 36 C or 100 degrees, but the side is 40 C and 103. And then the bottom, when you get to the real juicy section, is 118 degrees Fahrenheit or 47 C. So it sits here being really hot. Of course, I haven't let it go into standby. And it's a 100 watt per channel amp, yes. It's got decent total harmonic distortion numbers, yes. And it's designed to be your everything. Your everything. I want to be your everything. And the problem is Swiss Army knives suck. If you said I could have a Swiss Army knife knife to cut something, or a Kershaw, or a Spiderco, or a, a, an Aegis Mini, a SOG, I would take any of the other ones that are just knives. Because... When you shove everything in a box like this, I get, I actually get like claustrophobic as a reviewer. So this is not going to be the greatest review of the Nat M10 because I, in general, I don't like all in one things. I like to spread my stuff out. I don't want, there's a couple things, the, uh, the Sprout M100. I really like that unit. It did a lot of stuff, but it did it all really well and 600 bucks for everything. I actually could do the math and say, well, you can't get a good phone or preamp and a decent headphone amp, and a speaker amp, and a DAC, and a Bluetooth receiver, all for that money. You literally can't. But for $2,200, we're starting to get to the, the realm of like, hey, I could probably pull that off for less with more parts. The microphone we'll talk about, because this unit does take Dirac live, it does room correction with its own microphone, with this crazy ass adapter thing for the mic and everything. I haven't done it here because it was pissing me off. And the owner actually went ahead, because it only comes with a basic Dirac Live adjustment. And you could upgrade that for more money to do the full 6-point or 12-point room correction thing. And he offered me that code, and he sent me that code, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to blow my brains out if I keep delaying this review anymore. So, here's your unit. It's a box. It's got some slots. The sides are hot. You can see in there, there's what look like fins for like heat radiation, but these are not open. When I pulled off the plastic sheets, I was like, well, I'll uncover those vents. And there's just the slightest little gap hole right there for air to come through, and that's not enough. They need to put those ribs on the outside and actually cool this unit off. That is, red, that is glass. That NAD icon is glowing, and will turn red when it's cycling through things. We please get out of Catholic Radio now. Out of Catholic Radio. Back to the optical input, which is what I'm using, and I'll show you the back in a second. Say your name, say your name, say your name. Say your name. That's Enya, but the string quartet version. So. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God, that's so bad. Anyway, you can kind of tell what a unit can do from the back. Whenever I see something and someone's like, hey, what should I, should I buy this? The first thing I do is find a picture of the back of it. And from right to left, we've got 12 volt trigger out, infrared receiver in, which is weird because this doesn't come with a remote control and it really fucking should. 
Unless it does, and I just can't fucking find it. Because I'm pissed off that it doesn't have a remote control. Nothing in it. Nothing in the manuals or anything else that I've researched this unit with states it has an infrared control of any sort. And I really, really wish it did. Maybe you can get one. I don't know. Correct me in the comments. I'm going to rave about having not a remote and it's going to piss you off. Analog inputs one and two, so full RCAs, pre-outs, and I have them going to that headphone amp to 789 because I was going to test it, and I doesn't seem to want to output from the fiber optic input into that, or else it would be. In fact, I would have to turn this on, set that, and I have the worst headphone wire on the planet here from the S Edition XXs. We can plug that in. I want to hear that if it goes on, but then I'd also have to probably unplug this and then so subs working so why isn't the pre-out working because I'd hear those things blasting at this point don't know all right put those speaker plugs back in where were we we're just yelling at different inputs pre-out subwoofers one and two it'll do dual subwoofers coaxial in optical in which is what I'm using HDMI ARC, which is HDMI's audio return channel. That's what ARC stands for. A service button, a LAN and USB port. This is a streamer box. It means it's connected to Wi-Fi right now. I would recommend highly you connect it to wired just for ease of connection and not having to worry about getting fucked over if you don't have to worry about it. A very proprietary looking service port. I don't know what that is. Miniature HDMI, not sure. A standby button to actually turn the unit off. Now it's in the back, and I hate standby buttons in the back, so I'll have to mention that. Power plug, and then you have five-way binding posts, and a switch for bridge mono, which doesn't make sense, because this is $2,000, and it has all this stuff. Why would you run a bridge mono? Because then you have to buy another one, wouldn't you? And that would be very, very not cost-effective. Top, of course, is a mirror, and the front is showing my favorite feature, which is um, the worst, one of the worst implementations of a digital VU I've ever seen. Uh, first, I'm, I paused, I'm running it optical in, and it, I have it set to default to the VUs, because I like VUs. Look, see these vintage Japanese Calrads running off a little eBay controller that like lets them bounce, and you probably can't see them from the video because it's too far away and the light fucks with it. But they look beautiful and natural. And these, well, first of all, when I'm paused, and I can't touch the bottom because it's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's hold it up like this. This is just bouncing around at like 18, negative 18, and that's at negative 40. And if I unpause... That is the least smooth operating view I've seen. And then... When you pause music or the music stops, let's completely stop it, see if that changes anything. No, we get just this random, it like falls and that gets stuck and it's like, what the fuck are you, the $2,000, it's a VU. My Winamp back in like 1999 had a virtual VU and it was great and it had settings. This is, is and it's bad. Um, so like I was saying, there's no, Remote control. This remote control is for my computer. It uses a FLIRC. I'll link to a FLIRC. It's a little $20 fucking infrared receiver. You can take any remote control. Take your parents' old VCR or LaserDisc remote with a jog shuttle. You plug in a FLIRC. You load the software. You say, I want this to be next track. Um, and then you can set any remote control you want to be your home theater PC or computer remote. And of course I set my Emotiva aluminum with the speaker surround foams on the side so you get a nice squeegee as it because I don't use it for that thing. And that's great. This, and it has what looks like infrared receiver holes there. So I'm not gonna say it can't use an infrared remote. I'm just gonna say that I've never seen it, nor is it mentioned in any of the manuals. But it does have an IR in eighth inch, which would indicate if you put this in a cabinet, you could run that up and still use an infrared. I don't know. Someone explain it to me because I'm not going into this unit in any more depth. I'm just... I hate that. 
I hate it. I hate that. So we touch the screen and we get this. And this is the volume control. And it's since it's on optical, optical input, it can't control anything. You can pause optical, but it doesn't actually pause the music, it just mutes it. So even if I unpause that, we'll get off Mob Psycho for a second. So zeros, but even if we if we unpause it, then it's unmuted. So pause becomes mute. So that's interesting. Um, Amon Tobin bricolage. Here's our settings. Here's our different choices. Blue OS, analog one, two, optical, coaxial, HDMI arc, and Bluetooth. It's only Bluetooth Aptex HD. It does not have LDAC. Just something to note. Now, if we go here, you can see that there's presets, or you can set up the presets, but open the Blue OS app to go into my presets to reach music even faster. And then we have the setup, or the settings. So you get some player settings. You can cross over or have a sub hooked up for these little TX. These are the TX I reviewed a long time ago. They came with the TX amp. And so I got a crossover set to 80. LCD brightness is low for you guys on the camera. Indicator brightness is normal. Actually, we put the, oh, we can only do dim or normal. I wish something would have bright. Amplifier standby, which will not enable on optical. And I don't know what it is, because there's nothing playing overnight, yet I left this here, and it come back, it's 120 degrees in the morning. So it should sleep, but it ain't doing it, because it's set to standby. Volume limits, temporary dis video display, volume display percent, temporary dis LCD temporary display, volume display percent. You can have it not display the percentage, I mean, I guess. Source setup, and you have uh, the Blue OS, local music, cloud service, and radio service, so local music. You can have it do f album and text. Here's who they're selling this to. I, while I'm going through this, re-index library, I don't have anything, I don't have a network share, a specifically musical network share. I just have a NAS, and I just have my computers access it. Please stop being that. And it keeps kicking me out of this, and it's annoying. Reboot, factory reset, system info. It just got updated. The temperature left is 66 degrees Celsius. The temperature right is 66 degrees Celsius. So that's the temperature of the amps internally. I'm not even playing music. I, I've been sitting here getting ready to review it for like 40 minutes. And it hasn't been playing, it, it played music as much as you heard it play music. So why the fuck are the amps that hot? Just wanna know. Bridge mode, on and off. So you could bridge two of these units, I think, is what the point is, the same as the bridge on the back. Again, that's a hell of a $4,000 fucking unit right there. You can do better. You can do better. I'm sure that will get me pulled. Oh, let's stop at the same point and freak out. The little freak out bothers me. If it just stopped randomly and sat there, I wouldn't be as bothered, but they're physically, well, they're not physically moving. Those would be physically moving, but they're digitally moving just like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm sure it wouldn't do that if I was using... Oh, my hand's actually getting hot. Is this thing getting hotter as I sit here and hold it? 48? No, oh, it's about the same. It's hot. This unit hot. Let's look at the app for a quick sec. Because, again, no infrared remote comes to the unit. Even though it might have an infrared remote, you can maybe put to it. Not sure, no infrared options in the menu. There's no infrared options in the app. Here's the app. By the way, NAD is heart plus soul, you can hear. There should be an equal sign. If you're gonna do an add, and you're not gonna put a comma or a period, space doesn't count. Heart plus soul, you can hear. We should have no space, and just be heart plus soul, you can hear. I don't know. My playlist, my presets, my favorites. I don't have any of those things. I've tested this thing very much not to its maximum abilities. Playing Christian radio at the beginning is like, as far as I'm willing to go with it. Then you could switch your different inputs, Bluetooth, analog, coax, etc. Then you get settings in the app, alarms, you can enable an alarm. So I'm gonna compare this a lot to my Sonos. I have a Sonos amp. I did not spend $500 on a Sonos amp and that's too fucking much. I bought it used from someone for 200 bucks. And for $200, the Sonos app kicks the shit out of this app. And the amp 
is pretty fucking good. This might be a little bit better of an amp. I think I could probably get a topping PA3 and no one would tell the real difference. The real shit's gonna come when I talk about Dirac Live, which is room correction, which this is a hell of a way, it's a hell of a way to get your shit fixed is, is to Dirac Live room correction things. And I'm all for it. But let's keep looking through the app. Sleep timer, player, what's our options for the player? Player, IR remote. So there, you do have an IR remote. Can I just program any remote? Hmm. Next previous HMI Arc TV mode. Where's volume up? Should I program it with mine? I need to use another remote. Here we go. Okay. Let's try this. Volume up. Point remote unit and press volume up. Okay, cool. Okay, so I rescind my hatred. Because it obviously will learn any remote, because this is from my Emotiva uh, MC700. So now I should be able to control the volume with a remote from a seating position. It's just weird they don't give you one. For two grand, they should give you one, and they should give you a better one than this Emotiva. This Emotiva remote, that shit was the bomb. And this one is the modern Emotiva remotes, and they're not the bomb at all. Um, so obvious we've got presets one, volume next, mute check. Okay, good. So now I should be able to do that. Indicator brightness normal, amplifier standby, the same settings we had basically in there, except there was no infrared remote setting in the unit. So you need the app. So if you don't have a remote to set, you need the app or you need to touch the unit. Now the unit's pretty easy to control considering it's just volume. You either tap the right side of the wheel for it to go up or the left side to go down, or you can drag and grab and grab and drag it all the way around to 90 or 100%. Let's see if my, um, it does work. Although that was a fucking huge, what are these jumps? 61, 63, 66, 70, 71, 78, 80. That is, oh, I held it down, now it's at 63. Now it's at 50, whoa, 40. All right, so it's a little bit spastic. Now that could either be the remote or the unit, let's see. I don't like that at all. It like lags. I feel like it lags a lot when I'm doing that. So maybe I still have something to yell about with the uh, infrared remote control uh, display volume. So basically customize sources. So let's see, what's our optical input? We could pick the icon. I put a laptop icon because my optical is coming from a laptop. Auto sense on when your player detects it, hide the source if you're not gonna use it. So if you get this unit and you're like me and you're just gonna use like the OS and an optical, you could hide the HDMI arc, you're never gonna need to see that, you're never gonna have to switch through that. You could hide all those sources and then unhide them later. Um, audio settings. Now, we have tone controls. And yes, it has Dirac, but if you don't use Dirac and you just wanna adjust something, all you get is bass and treble in half decibel increments. And here's the weird part. If you go to the bass and treble on the unit, they're one decibel increments. So why are they half decibel increments on the phone and one decibel increments on the unit? Be consistent. Select attached speakers, one subwoofer. So you could either have no subwoofer, one subwoofer, or two subwoofers. I've got one subwoofer. It's a Mackie uh, MRS-10 down there, which is assisting these. Cross over to 80. Let's cross over a little bit higher. You can go all the way from 40 to 200. So let's go like 100, we'll cross over there. Uh, replay gain, you can enable and disable replay gain, which is a rare option, but I'm glad to see it. And that's for obviously music it's picking up off a file system. Output mode stereo, left, right, or mono. I don't know why you'd need that. Uh, volume limits and reset all, so let's get out of there. Again, that's mostly what stuff that's available on this. So that's the player. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Network shares. Now I don't have any official music network shares out of my network, because again, I just have laptops and I just go there and then import it into FUBAR and I'm done. But we could optimize artwork. Autofill is enabled. We could reload artwork. Re-index music collection, which is something, it should automatically do that. I'm not sure if you could set it. My favorite thing to do with this thing other than just play optical through it, because it does sound really good. And I would love to have played with Dirac Live, but again, it's the limited version of Dirac. 
the owner gave me permission. He gave me the access codes to the proper full version of Dirac. And I tried setting it up because you have to run the app on your phone and then run this. And I had to register the thing. And I'm just like, you know what? Just saying it runs Dirac, I know the benefits of that. To have full room correction, to have it compensate for that being a corner and this being an open thing with a lot of stuff behind it and maybe my desk surface. You put this where you're sitting, you play, it'll fix it. Just that fact alone, if you wanted to get a mini DSP to do that, you'd have to pay for the mini DSP and then $200 on top of that just to get the Direct Live functionality of it. And then you'd still be doing everything I'm talking about. So it does Direct Live, all you got to know. Um, but my favorite thing is the is the weird radio stations from around the world. Tune in is local music or sports or talk. So we can go to talk. We can scroll down. You can go to sci-fi. Uh, and then let's go. Let's see the fringe, science fiction, film podcast, monster talk. Here we go. And then you get. I guess these are old recordings of it. December twenty eighteen, May. So it's actually accessing old archives for this. And you can control the volume with the buttons on it's your phone. It's not apparent at this point. At Monster Shock, we love monsters. As we've engaged with these subjects from a skeptical point of view, I hope it's always remained clear that we're truly interested in these topics. The odd, the monstrous, the Fortean, the paranormal. And not just to dismiss or debunk them. These Deep talk well, radio I, website. I just think, like, yeah. I think there are incredible artists in all sorts of genres of music that mm -hmm. are making amazing stuff in hip hop, in rap, in rock, in, yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah. Those, the, this just doesn't seem like a nominated song to me. Oh, why? All right, I don't care mostly about that, but it's interesting to have access. Oh, and if you go back, hold on, there's one more thing. By location is interesting. Because you can go to Asia, Cambodia, and you could actually listen to whatever's playing in Cambodia. And you're not going to get that anywhere else. I would love if someone in the comments could please please share with me where I can listen to Cambodian radio. Because I need it. Once this unit goes back, I'm going to not have that in my life anymore. And I, I do need it. So back to my overall theory on streamer devices. I think for two grand, I would get someone a $500 laptop. That would give them the Bluetooth. You can get a laptop with touchscreen or even a tablet with touchscreen. And, and do a lot of the actual tasks this does. Infrared learning, I have a flirk. I do it right up there. It cost me 20 bucks. The amplifiers, they are very clean. But how much power do you want? You need more than 100 watts per channel. It's 160 watts with like the crazy hybrid peakness. It could, it could just push, but I don't know. I feel, always feel like I want separates and things like this, especially with this kind of budget. This is much, much, much for very minimalist people. They get this, they plug in their two speakers, probably exactly these speakers, by the way, as they are very fucking good, and then they're done, they're happy. And they have this, and maybe they programmed a, a vintage infrared remote from like a Laserdisc player or a VCR, and they're happy with that, and they're done. They hook up their network share of music, or you don't even need to. Did I, did I even go into the amount of, hold on, Streaming services, music services, right? I don't know how Amazon Alexa feeds into all this, but I mean, I have a $20 Alexa, so I don't really need her help. But you have Amazon Music, Bugs, Calm Radio, Deezer, iHeartRadio, KKBox, Myrtle, Murphy, Napster, Nugs.net, whatever the fuck a Nugs.net is, Cubuzz, Quobuzz, Radio Paradise, Slacker, Spotify, which is the only one that really is matters at this point, Sound Machine, Tahi Music Zone, Title, if you want to get that sweet MQA going, because it will do MQA, which is another point and subject I'd rather like yell at. Uh, tune in and wimp. So it's it's really, really convenient and it's really, really <laughs> I 
feel like I'm in a bad Steven Seagal movie when I hear Cambodian radio. The app is decent. It's not the worst. It's not the best. It's not the worst. I feel like they should give you more interaction. The screen is not bad in front. It's not the fastest screen. Obviously, the VU meters leave a shitload to be desired. I should be able to set like a wallpaper. Most likely an anime wallpaper. And then have the VUs bounce in front of that. None of that. Nad's not having it. This is like... I feel like Nad, the company, when I was coming up into this business, there was nothing Nad wasn't absolutely perfect for. But they were talking about the old school Nad speaker amps, like the metal ones, the blue-gray metal with the big push buttons. And once I got into it, as I started getting up to the point where I could start reviewing Nad stuff, it all became this futuristic, you know cutting edge digital touch panels and it's just i don't i prefer the idea of the old nad and not the new one um this will do exactly what you think it does very well but if you're any sort of techie person you could probably accomplish the same thing at least 90 percent of the same thing for less just saying so yeah goodbye nad you're way too hot. I'm going to hit the uh, standby button now. And now I'm going to hold down the standby button. And now I'm going to hold it down even longer. And there we go. And see it flashes red. And hopefully it stops becoming a a literal heater. I'm hot. It's one of the nicer days. I could actually have my air conditioners off and the windows open. And I still feel like it's 100 degrees out because I'm sitting in front of this NAD. So, if you want if you want or need Dirac Live, if you've got a shitty room, and Dirac will fix that, mostly. It's not magic, but it's pretty much magic. You have that option. If you want the higher-end Dirac, the full-blown one, you have to pay extra. If you want an infrared remote, pick one up. At a yard sale. Oh, how much for that? Oh, really? Just take it, drop the thing, keep the remote, run away. So yeah, it's it's pricey. It's pricey and it's pretty, but it's function. Just the fact that VUs just sit there and sort of like shake like a dying dog. It's shaking like a shitting dog. Great movie. Um, download that wallpaper in the description. Link to this. Link to whatever else I talked about, the Fleerk and... I don't know, something else. I'll link to a few equivalent things. I'll link to a Sonos. I don't even like linking to Sonos. But you gotta put it into your head if you're gonna use the... Because f- once you put this in a room and you're sitting 10, 12 feet away from it, the front screen's fucking irrelevant. All that matters is it's hooked up to your speakers and playing it. So a Sonos will do that and give you a better app. Even if it can't just pull directly from Indonesian radio. So... Oh, and by the way, for the people who are going to be like, Zeos, you can't test that $2,000 thing on those TX speakers, those cheap coaxial speakers. You think this is all I fucking... S- I have to correct people, like, every time. They think I sit down, and this is the only speakers I listen to this thing on. I listen to it on several very nice speakers, and it is a very good amp. But I don't think it's God tier. I, I wouldn't trade... I wouldn't trade it for, like, my Emotiva Base X. Maybe it's got a little bit more going for a little less noise floor than my base X, but two grand, it better fucking make me see stars. So, all right. If you want to see these videos early, check out the Patreon. If you want to bid on things in the yard sale, obviously not this, this is going back to its owner, but other things, other things will be in the yard sale. These MX4s will be in the yard sale to help fund RMF. These were donated to the channel by someone who's a fucking saint because they're like, here, I don't need these anymore and you guys need to go to RMAF, so here, just just auction them off. So if you want to join the $5 Patreon tier or higher, you can buy $4,000 headphones for, well, I'm going to assume less. If I sign them, will you pay more? I don't think that's how I work yet. I don't think Zeos is that popular. But, um, yard sales, see these reviews early, ask me any questions you like. Two or $5 tier, you have to message me on Patreon. $10 $10 tier, you get into a private Telegram chat on my phone. Bunch of great guys in there. Even a girl, not including Princess Pasta, but there's another one in there. Um, yeah, it's a cool place. And uh, check out the RMF GoFundMe. 
Uh, something like this will not be coming to our map. In fact, Nad probably should be there showing this off. I hope. I wonder what speakers will have hooked up to it. But check out the RMAF GoFundMe. Check out the post for this on Hi-Fi Guides if you want to continue the discussion not in YouTube, which should be most people. And yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow for another review. And oh, did I mention the wallpaper? Did, did I mention the wallpaper, which I'm pretty sure I've used before, but I don't remember on what, so I couldn't verify. So if you guys can find out what I used that on before, then I'll, I'll, I'll apologize. Anyway, tomorrow...